I'm just going to pray as we come to the Word today. God, I just thank you for this opportunity we can gather together today. God, I pray that you would help me to communicate your Word effectively today, God. God, I just pray that it wouldn't be just words from man, but your, your Holy Spirit would breathe fresh life into people today. God, let their eyes be open to all that they can be in you. God, let people be encouraged, Father. But God, we just pray above all that you be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen, amen. amen. Well, who's ready for the word today? You know, I've got a word on my heart today, and I really believe that this is the theme of this year for our church. And a couple of weeks ago, I was sitting in the front row of church, and um, I just felt God just stirring my heart. I was just thinking of all the scenarios of what people are going through in life and, and the year that we've had. And, and I just thought this year, I just felt God just put on my heart, this is the year of a supernatural return. Because you know, we've had some pretty extraordinary things happen in, in the last year. And some people are talking doom and gloom that things are never going to recover and people are going to lose this and lose that. And you know what? It, it, it may be a reality for some people, but I'm believing to live a life of faith and I'm going to believe for a supernatural return that people are just going to be able to be blown away by what God does, what God can restore and what God can build out of our lives. I know that for people's businesses, for people's personal life, people's finances, whatever it may be, I'm just believing that God continues to do a supernatural work in your life. Because we can all understand natural. There's, um, there's the natural thing where if I can just sow a certain thing, I'll be able to reap that back in my life. Like if I eat healthy, I'm going to reap back health in my body. If I exercise, I'm going to reap back health muscles in my life if uh and I'll, i do that a lot as you can tell i've got some big muscles and that's not stop laughing at me you know? <laughs> but you plant an apple tree an apple seed you're going to get an apple tree unless you're me you just get weeds but but there's a natural sense that what we sow there's a law what we sow we will reap but i really believe that yeah it's that, that there is principles that we sow what we reap, but I really believe there's a whole supernatural realm that we can actually reap where we haven't sown, that God can show up and blow our expectations, that He can pour so much more into our life than what we've sown because the God that we serve is a supernatural God. And I even think about the, the story of Nehemiah in the Bible. Nehemiah, if you read that, that, that book of the Bible, you see that um, the, his hometown had been completely destroyed. People said there's no way you could rebuild those walls. That's impossible. In the natural, it's impossible. But what they didn't understand is that Nehemiah served a supernatural God. And as he applied God's wisdom to his life, he saw a supernatural return, which means he built the wall in record time. I think it was something like 52 weeks or something like that. And it says that the enemies looked at him and said, surely God is with him. Because something supernatural took place, people can't look at us and go, oh, they just did it in their own strength. You know, a, a supernatural return glorifies God and how good He is in our life. And I'm believing that this year and every year we're going to continue to see supernatural returns into our life. Sure, we can see natural ones, but can't we live a life of faith? Let's not just settle for a natural return. Let's settle for a supernatural return. You know, when you're selling that house... You know, we're not just going to get just a natural price. We're going to get a supernatural price. You know, when you're buying, the same thing. People go, well, you can't get a bargain and sell. Well, you, it's, we're supernatural. You can do all things through Christ. And I just believe in our life, we've got to choose to be people that understand there is a supernatural realm. And I think we watch TV and we see supernatural as all these ghosts and haunted and enchanted things. I mean, don't let... The, the, the Hollywood distort your view of what supernatural is. Because what supernatural is, it's, um, it says this, in the explanation of it is being above and beyond what is natural, unexplainable by natural law. So it's just saying things that can just blow your mind. How did that happen? And I believe the God that we serve is a God that goes above and beyond, always exceeds our expectations, Come on, let's not settle for just the natural, but let's believe for a supernatural return in our life. Now, as you read through Scripture, there's a, a parable in the Gospels about the parable of the seed. And, and, the, and the way that the parable goes, that there's a farmer that goes out and scatters seed. And it says that some falls upon the path, 
some falls upon the rocky ground, some thorn, uh, falls upon the thorns, and then there's some that falls upon good ground and produces a good return in their life. You know, as you keep reading on in the scripture, Jesus explains what this parable is. And I don't want to go so much into the, the footpath or the rocky or the thorn. I want to talk about the good ground for a little bit. And this is what Jesus says the good ground meant. It says, as the seed that fell on good soil, this is in Luke 8:15. it says, and the seed that fell on good soil represents honest, good-hearted people who hear God's word, cling to it, and patiently... And patiently produces a huge harvest in their life. So it's saying that the word of God gets spread out, spread all over the place. It all determines about what ground it falls upon to what type of return is going to come into your life. Now, we don't want it to fall upon the path that the sun just scorches it or the weeds where the worries of this world choke it out, but it's got to fall upon good ground. And this scripture here says good ground is one that hears the word of God and clings to it and it produces a huge harvest in their life. So if we want to see a supernatural return in our life, it's about hearing the Word of God, and about, <coughs> excuse us, and about receiving the Word of God, clinging to it, and waiting for it to bring a great return into our life. In Mark 4.20, where it talks about this parable as well, Jesus said, um, it says it this way, And the seed that fell, so Mark 4 verse 20, And the seed that fell on good soil represents those who hear and accept God's Word, uh, and produces a harvest of 30, 60, and even 100 times as much that, uh, that had been planted. How good is that? That as we receive the Word of God, as we accept it, and say, I'm believing what the Word of God says, I'm believing in its promises, if we cling to it, it will produce a harvest 30, 60, 100 times more than what's sown. I really believe that's a supernatural return for our life. That we can sow something, but we can reap so much more back into our life, when it comes to the promises of God, when it comes to the ways that God has for us, as we cling to it, it produces a huge harvest, 30, 60, even 100 times more than what was sown. I don't know about you, but I'm believing for 100 times return in my life. Anybody else? Come on, let's not just settle for it. Yeah, I'm just going to plant this and get that. Yeah, sure, we can do that, but let's believe for supernatural things, a supernatural return to take place in our life. Things that go above and beyond the natural. Things that are unexplainable in our life. Supernatural. So I want to talk for a few moments today about four things that are on my heart that I really believe this year that we've got to keep an expectancy, keep, keep eyes looking for when it comes to these things in our life. Because I really believe that the supernatural is always happening around us. But we've got to be choose, choose to be looking for it. We've got to choose to look for it. So you're ready for this. And I just know that as I speak these say, it's going to stir your heart and we can believe together for things to happen in our life. Amen? Amen. So the first thing, a supernatural return I'm believing for. I'm believing for people to come to know Jesus in supernatural ways. I'm believing for people to come to know Jesus in supernatural ways. The, the, the story that I, I want to read from or even share from is in Luke 4 and it, it, this is a story where before we get to where we're going to read it talks about Jesus that's at the well and he meets this Samaritan woman and uh, pretty much he, he leads this woman to freedom he, he leads her to eternity and uh, and she her life's changed she runs and she goes out and she tells people about what Jesus has done in her life and then the, the disciples come back and and he's talking to his disciples and he says this to them in John 4, 37. You know the saying, one plants, another harvests. And it is true. But the next verse says, I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. What is he saying is, is that in people's journey of coming to know Jesus Christ, there's people that sow seeds, there's people that water seeds, and there's people that reap the harvest, that bring them to that point of decision. And he's saying that the harvest field is plentiful. There's been people that have been sowing seeds, watering seeds. And it's not about you taking them from A to B. It's about t um, doing your part in leading them to Jesus. It's about reaping when they're ready to be reaped, about sowing when they're ready to be sown into. 
And I really believe that as we do that, we're going to see a supernatural return of people coming to know Jesus Christ. As we understand, it's not about bashing people with the Bible to go, they're going to make a decision right now. Even though we want people to make decisions, maybe it's about just sowing a seed or maybe it's about watering the seed that somebody else has shared to them. Or maybe it's time to bring them to a point of decision. But I really believe in supernatural ways, just like we read in that, uh, heard in that story about the woman that came to know Jesus at the well, just happened to be there at that time and met Jesus and her life was turned around. I believe we're going to see supernatural things happen in people's lives when it comes to them coming to know Jesus Christ. Do you believe it? Yeah. Amen. But let's be people that continue to sow, sow water. Reap. Let's do all we can to get the good news out there because I'm believing that we're going to see just a supernatural return of people coming to know Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The second thing that I'm believing for, and I didn't know what to write down for the title of this point, but I'll just read it to you and it says this. I'm believing for a supernatural behold and stand in awe moments. I'm believing for supernatural behold and stand in awe moments. Moments as you just walk with Jesus, as you keep holding on to his word, he shows up and just blows your socks off. Because I really believe that God wants to do that. He wants to come and he wants to do supernatural things that go beyond what we can imagine so that we can just stand in awe and go, man, God, you are a good God. I know that as you look at your life, you've been walking with Jesus, you've had those moments where it's like, God, you are so good. I don't know how you did that, but you did that. And I'm just believing in increased measures. We're going to have those, oh my goodness, or OMG, oh my God, I can't believe God you did that, if you can even say that. And I'm just reminded of a story in 2 Kings 6 about when the, 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 the prophets were building a meeting place. And they were, they, were, they were building this place for God and they were working. There was a certain man there that was working with an axe and he's cutting down the trees to clear the way to, to build this, this meeting place. And as he's working and cutting this tree down, the axe head flies off into the water. You just think, what are the chances of it falling off? Then what are the chances of actually going into the water? He's in a situation where it's like he needs this axe head to do what God's calling him to do, but now he can't find it. It's lost. It's flown off into the water. And so what it says in, in verse 6, it says this, Then the man of God asked, where did it fall? When he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick and threw it there and made the iron float, made the axe head float. And what a crazy behold, stand in awe moment right there that God has just done. He, he threw in a stick and he got back an axe head. That's just like crazy. And when I read this story, I just see it as if we keep sowing and keep doing what we can do, keep bringing what we can bring, God will always bring back into our life what we need to fulfill the task at hand. He threw in a stick and got back an axe head. That's not very sow and reap in the natural. That's supernatural what took place. It was a, man, behold and stand in awe of what God can do. As you keep walking in obedience with God, we can see him do amazing things. Supernatural returns. Supernatural moments where we're just like, God, I can't believe that you did that. It could be as simple as driving along the road and you just notice that one of those new speed cameras that don't have signs on them. You notice it and you slow down just in time and don't get a ticket. Thank you, Jesus, that I saw that at the right time. It could be when you go to buy something and then they scan it and it comes up for half the price of what it said on the, uh, on the price tag. Thank you, Jesus. Don't go, well, it says it's more expensive. Just receive the blessing in Jesus' name. But it can be as little or as big just make sure you celebrate those supernatural behold moments and go, God, you are so good. You have helped me through it all. So I'm believing that we're going to see supernatural. People come to know Jesus in supernatural ways. I'm believing for supernatural behold and standing moments. And I'm believing for supernatural provision to flow into people's lives. Who here wishes they had a little bit more provision? No one. All right, we're all good here. We're blessed. That's just, uh, if you have enough, just, you've got to get a bigger vision. 
You know, if we want to be able to take new ground, if we want to be the influences that God's called us to be, we need provision to be able to do that. When it comes to the call of God upon your life, you need provision to be able to do that, whatever that may look like. But I'm really believing this year that we're going to be able to see and continue to see supernatural provision flow into people's lives. And the story I'm reminded about is when Simon was out fishing. And he's fishing and he catches nothing. He needed, he fished for a living. His provision came from fishing. He had probably targets he needed to meet. He needed a certain amount of fish to be able to live the lifestyle that he wanted to live. But this particular night, he was catching nothing. There was a lack of provision. And what I love is it says in Luke 5, verse 5 and 7, it says this, um, because what happened is Jesus came to him and said, go and cast your nets out in the deep. I know you've been fishing all night and caught nothing, but go out and give it one more go. Go out and cast your nets into the deep. And it says this, Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and, ha- and haven't caught anything. That's pretty much a, a normal fishing experience for me. That I go out all day, have all the gear, but never come back of any fish, but it's okay. But he says this, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. What's he doing? The word of God has been spoken He's become good ground. He's cling to it and says, because you've said it, I will do it. And it says, when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. How good would it be to sink in provision? Sink in blessing. God blesses you so much that you can't contain what He wants to do in your life. Come on, believing as we keep clinging to the Word of God, as we keep giving it another go, keep saying, God, you said it, I'm going to go give it another go. We're going to see provision pour in to your life. And not just to your life, but overflow to those people around you. Because what did it say? That His boat was full, but then His partner's boat was full also. I really believe as, a, as people of God, we're blessed to be a blessing. It's not about just filling our boats, but it's about pouring out and being a blessing to those people around us in any form. And, 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 and I don't want you to think this provision is, it's not just about money. It could be about energy. It could be about talent or getting the right people around you. I don't know what it may be, but I really believe for supernatural provision, for you to be able to accomplish what God is calling you to do in your life personally, for your family and for our church I really believe that we're going to see this year a year of supernatural provision. People go, oh, well, the year we've had is going to take five years or ten years or some people will never be able to recover what has been lost. Yeah, in the natural. But in the supernatural, God can do the impossible. Just like Nehemiah rebuilt the wall. Let's believe for the supernatural. Let's apply God's wisdom to our life so that we can see all that God has for us in Jesus' name. Amen? You know, sometimes people can hear what I'm preaching about now and just go, oh, you're just trying to stir us up. You're just trying to motivate. You're just trying to, you know what? No, I'm not. I'm trying to get your eyes upon Jesus. And if you can get your eyes upon Jesus, you can walk upon water. If Jesus is in your boat, he can calm any storm. And I want to encourage us, let's not be people that just settle for a natural return, but let's keep believing for supernatural things to flow into our life in Jesus' name. Come on, we're believing for supernaturally people to come to know Jesus. We're believing for supernatural behold and, and stand in all moments. We're believing for supernatural provision. And number four, I'm believing for supernatural healing to take place. Healing. Some people go, well, God can't heal. I prayed and God can't. I don't know why God heals some and doesn't heal others. I don't understand. When we get to heaven, we can ask him that. But if God has asked us to pray and believe for healing, I'll do that until the day he takes me home. And I just think we've got to have that attitude. We're believing for supernatural healing. And I know that during COVID, we saw an increase of, of mental health just increase dramatically where people are just struggling in their thinking and in their psychic. And I just believe that during all that, I believe it brought people to a place where they can now really experience all that God has from it. God can heal them where they're at. The story I'm reminded about is in Mark 5, 15. And, and this is after Jesus um, calms the storm when they're traveling to the other side and they re- return to the, they go to the other side of the, the lake and there's a, a demon-possessed man there that's 
He's just completely lost his mind. He's running around naked. It, it, it's, uh, it, it was just wild. People had tried to help him. There have been people that had tried to, to, to fix him in the town, but they couldn't do anything for him. So they put him in a cave. A cave. They chained him up. He was so violent that he could rip the chains off. But he came to Jesus and Jesus healed him. Jesus set him free in a supernatural way. Because in the natural, people tried to tie him down. People tried to isolate him, but it didn't work. But when he came to Jesus, Jesus set him free in a supernatural way. And then it says this in Mark 5 verse 15. Um, people heard about it and it said, When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there, dressed and in his right mind. And they were all afraid. They couldn't believe what God had done in this person's life. They were afraid. They were standing in awe about this person that was so crazy, that was so gone, that was beyond in their belief any type of recovery, but came to know Jesus and Jesus healed him. He was there in his right mind. And I'm really believing that this year we're going to continue to see a supernatural healing in people's minds where maybe they're going crazy, they're going here, there, and everywhere. There's going to be a, a God invading their life, dressing them in the righteousness of God and helping them put on the, the mind of Christ. Supernatural healings. And, and I just want to encourage as a church, if, if you're in your day-to-day -day walk and you experience something that's not well, whatever it may be, you feel the Holy Spirit lead you, pray for them. They don't have to bring them to church to pray for healing. You've got Jesus in your life. You've got the Holy Spirit in, in you, working in you. Pray for them. Don't make it weird. Just Jesus, heal them, whatever it may be. Let's just see what God does because God can show up when he's got people that are willing to be used, that are willing to cling to the word of God to produce a harvest. The last thing I want to talk about is I'm believing for, a, for relationships to re, be restored in supernatural ways. Relationships to be restored in supernatural ways. Could be marriages, could be relationship within a family, could be a friend, whatever it may be. I believe some relationships end, and it's a good thing. But there's some relationships that end, and it's the, get, the devil's just gotten there and brought division. And I'm just believing that there's going to be a supernatural um, wave of of relationships being restored. Then, when it comes to marriages, marriage is God's idea, and if it's God's idea, He gives us the power and the ability to be able to fulfill it and to uh, and make it healthy. And I'm just believing that in people's marriages that we're just going to see health, yeah. restoration. We're going to see supernatural things take place. And, but I'm reminded of the story of the prodigal son in Luke 15 about a son that wanted his inheritance. I don't want anything to do with his anymore. I'm going to do it my own way. So the relationship was broken. And he went and he lived his life and he wasted his inheritance. A famine hit the land. You know, a, a supernatural um, uh, event took place that brought him to a place where it was like, I need to go back and reconcile. So when that famine took place, he did, he went back and he was reconciled to the Father. And I just see that in, in, in our life, that in supernatural ways, he can use anything. God used the famine to bring that relationship back. I just believe that God's going to use other things in supernatural ways to bring restoration, to bring wisdom into that situation so that you can see healing take place. We don't want to be wasteful because a prodigal son I mean, it pretty much means a wasteful person. Let's not waste the blessings that God brings into our life, the relationships, the provision, the, the, the gifts and talents. Let's never be wasteful, but let's keep letting God do a work on us so that we can use it to advance his kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Who's believing for a supernatural return? In the natural, we can put our plans together, and we should do that. But when we submit them to God, we put the supernatural element in it, which God, I need you to do exceedingly abundantly. I want a 30, 60, 100 times return on what this is. Let's not settle just for the natural, but let's keep believing for the supernatural to take place in our life. Do you believe it? Say amen. 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 Now, I just want to encourage every person just to bow their heads and close their eyes for a few moments. We do this just to respect, um, not respect, so we just do this for a moment so you can just focus on yourself. So I want to ask you a question. 
Do you have a relationship with Jesus? Because if you don't have a relationship with Him, you can have one today. The way we have a relationship with God, it's through our, our, our confession. We, we confess that Jesus is Lord and we believe in our heart that He rose again. It's about a confession, it's about a belief and it's through our faith in Jesus that we can have right standing with God. We can have relationship with Him. You know, the world that we live in, they like to become religious where it's about do's and don'ts, it's about rules. But can I tell you something? It's not about being religious. It's about having a relationship. And it's through that relationship that God does a work from the inside out. He gives you the desires and the power to change and to make right choices and to, um, and to have the right fruit come out of your life. So I want to give you an opportunity here today that maybe you don't know Jesus. I'd love to lead you in a prayer of inviting Him into your life. Or maybe you once said yes to Jesus, but you've walked away. I'd love to help you and lead you in a prayer to recommit your life to Jesus today. People do this every week in the life of our church. And I know that there's people here and there's that knocking on your heart. You're feeling that, man, I, I, there's something going on. I believe that's God. He's knocking on your heart saying, come on, let me in. Don't put it off till tomorrow. Stop pushing me away. Receive him. And watch the return that He brings out of your life. So if that's you, I'm just going to count to three. You want to give your life to Jesus for the first time? Or are you coming back? Why don't you lift your hand up high and just keep it up long enough and high enough for me to see it. Then you can put it down. I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to embarrass you. I just want to see who I'm praying for. And then we're all going to say a prayer together. So if that's you, the count of three. Lift your hand up high. You ready? One, two, three. If that's you, put your hand up all over this place. I see that hand up there. See those hands there. Who's going to be next today saying, I want to give my life to Jesus for the first time or coming back? Once you put it up and I've seen it, you can put it down. Another hand over there. That's great. It's great. God's doing something in people's lives today. You know, I'll lead you in a prayer right now. We'll all say it together to encourage you. But I believe as you say this, you're inviting Jesus in. I'll give you the words to say. You just mean this from your heart. It goes like this. Dear God, come on, let's say this together. Dear God, thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for me. I believe that he rose again. I confess that I'm a sinner and I repent of that. Jesus, come into my life. Wash me clean. Be my Lord and Saviour. In Jesus' mighty name. I want everybody said, Amen. Amen. Come, let's rejoice with those people that gave their lives to Jesus. Amen. Can we all stand just before we I hand back to Mel to close the service? I want to pray for all we'll stand up and stand up. We can stand up now, it's all right. It's like, we can stand up. Um, I just want to pray for a supernatural return into your life. So if you want to receive this, raise your hands to heaven. I just want to pray for you and and let's believe and let's be expected for God to bring a supernatural return into our life. So God, I pray for every, our church, pray for every single person. God, we just, I just know that you're a God that does exceedingly above more than we can think, hope, imagine. And God, we believe this year for a supernatural return. God, we just pray, Father God, that our boats would be so full. God, that it'll be an overflow into other people's boats, God. That we'll just see, God, a, a mighty move of God in a supernatural way, that we'll see people come to know Jesus like never before. We'll see people healed like never before. We'll see those moments in our life where it's we just behold and stand in awe of Your goodness of what You can do, Father. God, we just pray, Father, God, that You'd have Your way in people's lives. God, we pray that You'd set people free, Father. But God, we just pray through it all that You draw people closer to Yourself. In Jesus' mighty Name. And everybody said, Amen. Let's thank God in advance for what He's going to do. In Jesus' name.